Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video we're going to be going through the new enhanced input system in Unreal Engine 5 and we can see how we can make this little controller move around and then we can press tab to bring up a menu and you can see the game isn't paused in the background but using W, A, S and D I can no longer move but if I press tab we can close the menu and then we can carry on moving around as we normally would. This is going to be very blueprint based, but I'll show you how you can use the blueprint side of the input system to then make calls over into C++ at the end. Yeah, let's just get straight on with it. Okay, so I'm just going to make a new project here and I'm going to start with a blank project and just for simplicity, I'm going to use blueprint, but obviously from the blueprint side, if you've got a C++ uh, project, you can fall into the C++ and use the functions that you've defined there. And and I'll show you a test example at the end of this of how I've gone about that in my own project. Um, but for now, let's use a blueprint pro uh, project. And I'm just going to call this one Enhanced UI uh, Tutorial. And we'll create this project. Okay, so we've got our project here. And you can see that this is uh, it's just loaded into the open world demo test scene. And we can use this as a little uh, playground uh, for this. So. I'm going to click on manage plugins. If you don't catch that before it disappears, you can go to uh, edit and then plugins. And then we want to search for the uh, enhanced input um, plugin. And it is in beta, uh, but I think it's quite far along the beta line. Um, it seems quite stable from what I've seen. Uh, so I'm just going to enable this. And obviously it does warn you that it's a beta here, but you can just click yes. And then we need to restart the Unreal Engine uh, editor for the plugin to become active. So let's just hit restart now. Okay, so we're back in Unreal Engine and we can see that that has been enabled. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go over to edit uh, project settings, come down to input, and then under default classes, we can choose uh, enhanced player input and enhanced input component for these default classes here. And you don't need to save anything in the project settings, we can just close that. So now I'm going to make a new folder uh, inside my content folder. I'm going to right click create and then we can call this uh, input. And the first asset that we're going to make is an input action. So if we right click here uh, and choose from input and then we can make input action, input mapping context. And then this is bindable input config, uh, which we're not going to cover in this video. We're just going to be uh, concerning ourselves with these two. So for our input action, um, I'm going to choose this and I'm going to call this IA underscore move forward. And if I double click this to open it up, you can see that we've got some um, options here. So we've got consume input and we can make that true or false, whether we want it to consume the input. Uh, we want to, there's a checkbox here, if we want to be able to trigger this input action whilst the game is paused. Uh, we can choose this here and then we can change the value type uh, importantly here so for our move forward i'm going to use a axis 1d so it's going to be if we're pressing w uh, the axis will be one if we're pressing s it'll be minus one and that can move us back and forward in the world uh, you can also do axis 2d and 3d um, but for our sake i'm just going to do 1d because um, that's kind of because uh, it's a bit easier to understand and work with. So if we choose axis 1D here for our um, value type, and we can just save this input action and let's just close that window. And I'm gonna just duplicate this and I'm gonna call this one move right. So now we've got these two input actions, but that doesn't really mean anything. We need to give them some context. Um, so what we can do is we can create a uh, right click input and make an input mapping context. I'm going to call this im and we'll call this underscore in game, just in game because we already know it's an input uh, mapping. So we'll call this one in game and I'm going to double click this to open it up. And now you'll see that we've got this mapping section which we can add uh, new mappings to. And this might look familiar. So if we go up to file, uh, sorry, edit and then project settings. And then we go over to uh, input. 
So you can see here, this is where we would normally have uh, done our input before this plugin was released. So we'd make an axis mapping and then we'd name this one to be move forward. And then under there, we'd had our, uh, our keyboard uh, W key with a scale of one and a S with a scale of negative one. But we don't need to do this. Uh, we don't need to do this now. We're going to do this over here in this new asset. So I'll leave that there for now, but I will delete it in a sec just so we can see what we're doing. So here under non, instead of typing in move forward, we can choose our move forward input action, which is that asset that we made. So let's just check uh, that. And then we can assign some uh, button prompts. So for our first one for move forward, we'll use W. And we'll add another one and we'll use S. So that's going to go backwards. Now, if we pre press S, it's going to trigger this uh, move forward input action and it'll give us a positive value. So whether we press W or S, that'll give us one on the axis. So what we need to do is we can use this uh, modifier section here. So whereas here, the only modifier we've got is the kind of scale modifier. So we can, you know, we minus one, we're, we're negating it, we're making, um, we're taking the axis and making it negative. Now under our modifiers, we can click plus and you can see that there's a range of ones here already and we've got one called negate. So that's going to do the exact same thing as putting minus one here, um, but instead it's just a easy drop down list and we're going to negate it. Now as well for our move forward, I want to be able to support game pads. So I can come over here and click uh, the plus, and this time let's choose gamepad, and we'll do left thumbstick um, Y axis forward. And under our modifier, uh, you don't need to do this, but there is a dead zone modifier. So it will only kind of trigger if we are between, if the stick is actuated between this dead zone. So between zero and two and one. So that means that we're gonna have to push it uh, a little bit further than the center to actually get it to register. And this is this helps have uh, controls feel a lot smoother. And you can see that we've got some other options in here as well, which we're not going to dive into in this video. But um, just as an example, we've got player mappable options. So we've got a name for our input action, which is move forward. But we can also uh, assign it a category and a display name. So I could name this as our move forward um, input action, then I'll be able to refer to this on our UI and, uh, you know, get the display name of this input and it will be move space forward instead of this IA underscore. And we can, you know, add our translations into this as well. We can localize these uh, if you want to support other languages and you can also put a category. So we could have this as movement input. And then we can also give a description to this config file if we want to. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave this as it is. So W, S, and then the gamepad left. And then we can do the exact same thing. I'm going to remove this so I don't forget. And then we've also got move right. So let's create another mapping and we'll do the exact same thing. So we'll do our input action move right. I'm going to use the D key to go right. And we'll use the A key. To go left, we'll add in gate modifier, and we will also support the controllers by clicking plus, and then we'll do gamepad, and we can do the x axis, and we will put a dead zone. There we go. We can press uh, save on that. So this is our in-game um, input mapping action. I'm going to make one more action. So these have been axis. I'm going to make it so if I press I on the keyboard, we can bring up a menu. So, you know, for example, for example, uh, an inventory menu. Um, I'm going to make an inventory menu, obviously, in this. We'll just use a debug log, but you can see kind of but it'll help illustrate the fact that we can have different input contexts. And hopefully that'll make sense when we get to it. Um, so I'm going to do input action and I'll call this IA underscore uh, Actually, we'll call this like toggle menu. Um, it doesn't have to be inventory, it could be anything. So toggle menu. And in our in-game input here, 
we're going to make a new mapping and we will call this one uh, we'll choose our toggle menu um, button here and for this uh, let's use the tab button and or a controller um, so we can press Y we can press the little plus button and then on a gamepad we could use maybe the Y button on an Xbox controller so we can go X uh, gamepad face button top which would be the Y button now in our actual input action um, this is just like an actual action button it's got a digital bool so it's either going to be pressed or not so this is quite similar to Back in our old input, we have action mappings and axis mappings. So digital bool, that's a action mapping essentially. And then we've got our axis mappings here as well. So it says digital bool, it's just the same as having like a pressed button. It doesn't give you like a plus or one kind of, it doesn't give you like an axis. Um, so let's go back over to here. So now we've got our in-game menu. So let's make a character that we can actually move forward and backwards and left and right with. Um, so I'm just going to close both of these for now. And let's go back to our content folder. And I'm just going to do uh, blueprints in here. Let's make a blueprint class. And let's have just a character for now. So we'll do BP underscore player character. And in here, I'm going to open this up. And let's give, do we have any skeletal meshes uh, that we can choose from? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a cube. This just so we can see what's going on. Let's scale this smaller. Uh, and then just so we can see the direction that we're facing in game, do this. So we know that that's our sort of forward direction. So we'll compile that and then come out of this. And we also want to make a, uh, our own custom player controller. So we'll do BP underscore player controller. And we will need a game mode um, to control all of these from. So we can do a game mode base and we'll say BP underscore game mode base like that. So first things, let's go up to the um, blueprint kind of button up here. And under project settings, we can change uh, for select game mode base class. Let's go and choose our BP underscore game mode base, which is made. Let's double click this and open it up. And then we've got our player controller class, which will do BP underscore player controller. And our default um, pawn class is our BP underscore player character. So these are the two things that we've just made. So now if we so now let's just give our character um, a spring arm and a camera just so we can see what's going on in the world so we'll do spring arm and to that we will add a camera and let's just rotate our spring arm up slightly and let's make it a, say 600 file and save and then let's hit play so we can see now that our character has been brought into the world and it should be, you know, it's there, it's looking good. Um, we can put a player start in the world as well. Okay, basic, player start, let's just drag that out. Got it, so it's pointing in the sort of forward direction, which is great. So, right, there we are, there is our character. If I pop out, F8, you can see it's facing down the X axis and it's in our world. So let's use our input now to make it move. So over in our player controller, I'm going to go over to the event graph and I'm going to get rid of the tick for now. And now the player controller using the new input system has a uh, enhanced uh, input component uh sorry enhanced input subsystem here we go so this subsystem it can have different um contact context mappings assigned to it so we can say assign or we can say add uh mapping context and let's drag this in so it's important to know that we can have multiple mapping context and we have to keep track of you know which ones are active um 
and I'll show you that in just a second. But for now, let's just choose our in-game asset, which is what we've got, and we'll tile. And then if we right click, we can type in IA underscore for input action, and then we can do um, move forward. And you can see that we've got a list of different states here. So we've got triggered, started, ongoing, and completed. So for an axis, and obviously we've got the action value, which is the axis, um, which will return one or minus one. So with triggered, that's going to be called every frame that we're holding down the button. And then completed will be called once when we lift up our finger from the button. So we can show this by, if I come off, uh, triggered and a print string and if we just pass in our action value to it I'll have to um, to string and let's just copy our print string drag this into completed and we can say uh, move forward released I'll save I'm gonna drag that up there and let's save our map so we'll just say test map okay so if we hit play now when we hold down W, you can see over on the left that we printed off uh, one, and then we let go and it says move forward released. If we press S, because we've negated the value, it's negative one, and we let go, move forward released. So we can use this to move our character in the usual way. If I delete this, say get player character, player index zero, and let's add movement input let's just type this in manually so the forward vector is one and the scale value is our action value here this is going to be called when we are holding down w or s and it will add to our movement you see now we're holding w we're going forward holding s we're going backwards so the great thing about this is this is independent from our mapping. So if we go look at our mapping again, we can, you know, add modifiers, add triggers, we can change the buttons around, we can do whatever we want to this mapping. And as long as whatever it's doing, it will call this move forward input action. And that's the thing that we're referencing here. So let's just um, get our move right going and we'll add move input do one on the y x zero triggered scale value get player character so now we can move left and right and we you know, move around in the world we go to my player character on the character movement i'm just going to make sure uh, orient rotation to movement and then our, on our uh, Player capsule. Uh, I'm going to say control rotation, and I won't use controller rotation. So now, ooh, ooh. okay. So I just made some tweaks to my player character just so we can see what's going on a bit better. So you know, we're using W A S and D to move around, and if we go back to our controller, go back to our controller. So we also had this button that said. Uh, input action toggle menu so here this is when I press the tab key so let's do a print string and we'll say uh, open menu so if we press tab and we're moving around we press tab and you can see it says open menu up in the left of the screen so let's make just a dummy kind of fake menu that can pop up um, so we can see that illustrated better so we'll do widget blueprint and we can say so use a widget we'll do wbp underscore uh, menu so to this i'm just going to add to a border we'll get it to fill the screen and we'll make it gray slightly invisible in fact that should do the brush so we'll make it kind of gray and sort of semi-transparent tile we'll go back to our player controller and here I'm going to make a variable and we'll call this one um, menu WB 
XP. So this would probably be managed on a HUD class. It wouldn't be done usually in a controller. Um, but for now, let's just do that. So we'll do BP underscore menu. So when we toggle the menu, I want to get our menu and we'll create widget. So we are going to create widget. Class is going to be our WBP menu. We can set our menu widget blueprint to be the return value of this. And let's add it to the viewport. So add to view. Okay, so when we let go of the tab key, it's going to add our menu to the screen. So we can hit save, go back over to play. So we're going around, we can press tab, and it brings up our um, menu. But we can see in the background, we're still moving around. Now, if you wanted this to be kind of like an inventory panel, for example, and have the player uh, and stuff going on still in the background, and you didn't want to pause the game, or you didn't want to change the UI mode to UI only instead of from game and take that away from the player. So what we could do instead is when we press the tab key, we are going to get our enhanced local player subsystem. So from this, we're going to remove uh, mapping context and we're going to remove our in-game mapping. So if I drag over to here, so now when I press tab, this comes up and even though the game is running in the background, the game isn't paused, I can no longer use WASD to move. But unfortunately, I can't use tab anymore either to close the menu. So that's where we can make another uh, input mapping context. So let's right click, create, input, input mapping context, and we'll do IM underscore. And this can just be UI. So now we're going to have a different set of actions for our UI. So over here, I can go to mappings and I can assign um, just the toggle menu button to this. So I can assign the toggle menu input action um, to our UI. And I can either, you know, set the exact same um, buttons. So I could have tab. And we could get controller, gamepad, and we could say gamepad face button top. Or we could choose some different buttons. So for example, if we wanted to toggle the menu closed with escape or B on the controller, so we press Y to bring up our inventory and then B to close it, we could say here uh, gamepad face button right. So this is now the B uh, key. I'm going to leave this as tab because if we press escape, that shuts down the game. Um, but you can see now that from this one input action, in diff depending on the scenario and the kind of circumstances, the context, we can choose which uh, keys are actually mapped to that action. And the action is we want to toggle a menu. But what keys do we want to map to the action? So, you know, that's where the power of this comes in. So going back over to our player controller, so here we are removing this mapping context, but then we also want to add our new UI context to this. So we'll connect this up, connect this up, that out of the way. So our input system is the target. So now we can choose our UI um, mapping context. So now this is one route. And if we make a variable and we can say the uh, is menu open, Let's make this a Boolean. So what I'm going to do is on our, after we've set the context to be UI only, we can then say is menu open is true. And then I'm going to copy this up to the set and paste it and we'll make a branch. We'll use our is menu open as the condition. So if the menu is open, then uh, we want to do this down, which we're going to do down here. And if the menu isn't open, then we want to open it. So this is our uh, opening the menu logic. So let's move that down there. And this is our um, close menu logic. So this is kind of the reverse of this. So we want to unset the is menu open. We want to add back our in-game mapping and we want to remove our UI mapping. And then here we can get our menu widget blueprint and we will move from parent. So now if I go back over to our map and press play, 
So we can see WSD, we can move around, we can press tab, and we can no longer move around, but we can press tab again to close our menu and we can move around again. And now during all of this, the game was never paused behind. So if I quickly make a, another blueprint, different class, uh, actor, pp underscore rotator, drag this in, the event graph is tick and add uh, world rotation. And I'm just going to add, let's say 10 to the Z every frame. I'll save. So this is in the world now. Hit play. You can see that's spinning around in the background. That's going quite fast, but never mind. We can press tab. So that's still going. The game isn't paused or everything is still running in the background, but we've just brought up our menu. So uh, it's not paused, but we can't move. Tab, we can close it, and then we can carry on moving around. So there's just one use case showing how powerful um, these input mapping contexts are and input actions. Obviously, you could do a lot more with this. So we could have so we could have like a toggle menu. So for example, uh, we could say when it starts, we want to open the menu, and when it's completed, we want to remove the menu. So this is now this now becomes toggle. So we hold down tab, we let go. We can hold down tab, we can't move, but the menu's open and we can let go. You can see there's a lot of power here. These different states, we can do a lot of different stuff with them. We can make a lot of good different logic for them. Now, if I go over to a project I've been working on, so over here, if I open up my player controller, you can see that I've got my in-game input, which is kind of the same as what I've just been showing. So we've got our move forward, move right, open inventory. And then over here, I've got close inventory. And these are calling to um, a C++ function that I've got on my CM uh, player controller, which is what it's called. But the toggle inventory and the movement, these are C++ functions, which we can look at over in Rider. You can see here, we've got our move forward uh, and move right functions. In our player controller, we've got the toggle inventory kind of code running there. Obviously in the header, these are U functions that are tagged as blueprint callable. So now we get the kind of blueprint functionality of the input in this quite easy to visualize way, but we're making calls directly to the C++ side. Um, so that is kind of how you can, you know, as usual access uh, C++ functionality uh, using the new enhanced input system. So I hope that was useful. Um, it was a lot to cover. I ran through it quite fast. What I'd really recommend if you want to learn more about this is uh, you can check the documentation, which as usual isn't the most sort of digestible, but there is a lot of interesting stuff here. So hopefully having watched my video and seen the sort of visual side of it, you'll be able to pass the documentation just a little bit more and understand it a little bit more. And I would highly recommend the Stackobot project, which is a Epic Games uh, sample project. We can just, you can just download on the marketplace. So that's a stack o bot. So I'd get this and it's a really simple, small project that you can dig around in and you can see kind of exactly how it's working for them. Um, their little player controller, uh, it has it all commented and sort of laid out nicely. Um, so yeah, that's another kind of good resource. But yeah, hopefully that all made sense and you enjoyed this video. If you want me to dive any sort of deeper into the enhanced input system in Unreal Engine 5, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to do that. If you want the project files for this little project that we've just made, as usual, that will be available over on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash danpos. That's linked in the description. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. As always, I just want to thank my amazing Patreon supporters. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have John Smart and Trey Briggs. And you can see all of the wonderful 4,000 XP tier members on screen now. Thank you everyone for your continued support.